This is for the renovation of a rear GS caliper which uh, suits the GS 750, 850, 1000 and 1100 models. The same calipers virtually used across the range. This one, the bleed nipples have been successfully removed without causing any damage. It does need some renovation but the body works pretty good. The piston appears to have been damaged quite badly by somebody I assume trying to grip it to remove it. But the damage to that edge of it, this face can be smoothed off so long as the piston itself is okay. And the piston itself looks in reasonable condition. There's no corrosion on it. It doesn't appear to be, apart from right at the edge here, there doesn't be any damage on the main part of the piston itself. Again, a clean up. I would say that could probably be reused. However, I've only got one piston, so I would need spare pistons and uh, seal kits for it. The pads are usually retained by pins that go across here. The pins are missing as well, so the pins need to be replaced and there's little circlips that hold those pins in place. On the plus side. Give me a second, just while I pop that back into place. I do have some spare repair kits. I do have two pistons that are specifically for these rear calipers. The new, they're the same depth, obviously the same diameter because that's what they're made for, but they only have a seal with them, there's no boot. Okay, so that's a quick setup of what I intend to do. Two pistons to sort out one caliper. Still need the pins. I need to find the two bleed nipples as well. One of the jobs to do is to clean up the bolts that hold the caliper together. As you can probably see, the threads in this are looking a little gummed up. It's either corrosion or more, what I suspect, is that it's a Loctite solution that's been put on here to prevent the bolts from loosening and the, potentially the caliper coming apart. Right, okay, how are we going to do this? Splash a little bit of machine oil onto the threads. Clamp the bolt into the vise. Lock the tap into the holding tool. And gently on with it. Make sure I catch the threads properly. I don't want to cross thread it. There we go. The very fact that that feels quite easy to go on tells me that it is the correct thread. Oh dear, dear, dear. Wow, that is quite tough. That is now turning the bolt. That's now turning the bolt in the vise. Okay, I'm going to have to find another way to do this. I suggest maybe using an Allen key to hold it. 
Right, I've got an Allen key that fits. Unfortunately, the Allen key doesn't actually say what size it is on it. So I can't tell you that, sadly. Put the Allen key into the vise. And hopefully, that will now hold it enough to allow me to tap. Not really a knot of evidence of much coming off there, really. Makes me worry that maybe all I've done is blunted the tool. But yeah, those threads look a heck of a lot better now. A bit of dirt has gathered up around the head there. Get a little cloth and wipe this off. That's lovely. That is lovely. Now, although that has cleared those threads, I can still see that there is some... Let's turn it the other way around so the light catches it better. There is some slight damages on the thread that look to me like it's more likely corrosion. Anyway, that's it. Another one of those to do. You can see those threads look pretty clear anyway, but no harm. We'll run it through. Also probably do with just uh, running these holes out making sure that uh, they're nice and clear too as if there has been thread lock in there which is quite likely then the thread lock will be just as caught up yeah there you go that's caught already the thread lock will be just as bad in there as it was on the bolt itself yeah there you go it goes in part of the way and then it stops OK, I'll get some taps and run them through as well. And I must learn the difference. Die. Tap. <laughs> I really must learn the difference. We've given the two body halves a clean up. There's still some little flecks of paint left on them. I could... I did try wire brushing them off, it didn't seem to make any difference. I could hit them with paint stripper, but to be honest, I think for a caliper it's not that important. I've had a go in the cylinders to clean up the inside of the cylinder using chrome cleaner and a little scouring pad, which seems to have brought it up quite nicely. I've even gone into the groove for the seal. And that's cleaned up quite nicely. That seems to be pretty clear now. And of course I've done both halves. And in spite of some damage on the outside of this, I'm convinced that this is okay to use. As I say, the cylinder in there is nice and clean now. I also used a little cotton bud, an old cotton bud, to clear out the oilways. To make sure that there's no dirt in them. And that's all nice and clear. 
the one from here was a little bit more tricky although the feeding for the bleed screw is straightforward enough it's the actual transfer comes in from here into here it's a little bit more tricky fortunately it is on a bit of an angle which does make it slightly easier to get through but I think I've cleaned out the worst of those so I think those caliper bodies are now ready to paint I've also received in the post some bleed nipples I bought a pack of four I thought they'd come in handy but what I've noticed when trying these into the caliper bodies that they are actually a little bit short on one side when I screw this one in it goes right down virtually to the hex and to be completely honest I'm not exactly sure whether it's bottoming out on the hex or whether it's bottoming out on the bottom of the bleed nipple itself so when I took that and compared it side by side with one of the previous ones that had been in there I can see that it is in fact slightly shorter now since that one's pretty good it's a little bit corroded at the end cleaned it up as best I can but I think it will be good enough I hope it will be good enough to work in that side and I can use the new one on the other side which fortunately isn't quite as deep so that fits on there quite nicely so that will be my player of bleed nipples and I've also got spares for the other caliper body okay so that's bleed nipples taken care of we've also got the pins to go across that hold the brake pads they're ready to go on now it's coming down to time to paint these bodies obviously I need to give them a, a degrease before I can put the undercoat on but I also want to blank off these holes to protect the threads now because I had several sp uh, two spare bodies I've also got now this spare I beg your pardon that's the wrong one there we go we have a spare banjo bolt which can go in there that will blank that off nicely I can always wrap a bit of tape around the top of that as well but to be perfectly honest I don't think I need to it doesn't matter if that gets covered in paint I'm also going to use a short screw to blank off that now the thread is actually slightly smaller but what I found is as it gets so far down there is just enough to catch it and hold it into place there we go that will sit in there it's not tight it is a bit loose and if you shake it will come out but it doesn't really matter if I get it in there enough just to blank that off and then that would be ready for spraying once I've sprayed that half I can then transfer of course that across to the other body there is no banjo bolt on this side that feeds both sides I haven't actually tried this yet um, yep yeah, that will go in there that will blank that off and I will only be spraying one side I won't be spraying that side because obviously I don't want any paint to get inside the cylinders I want them kept clear and I don't want any paint to go in through these holes which may tend to block them so degrease and they're ready to paint